Let's save some data on an item. Let's see how NBT works. All right, we find ourselves back in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to take a, let's say tentative look at how NBT data works and how you can basically save values on your actual items inside of your inventory, for example. For that, what we're gonna do is we're going to basically add in a data tablet item, so to speak, which is going to save the result of your last right click from the dousing rod. That was sort of the example I came up with. And I think that it will illustrate the point fairly well. So for that, we're going to create a new Java class instead of our item custom package here. And that's the data tablet item. And this will, of course, extend the item class fairly straightforward for the time being. And then we're going to hover over create constructor matching super. And what I will actually do is I will actually copy over the contents of this class. All of this is, of course, available to you in the description below, either in the GitHub repository or in individual gists. And I will quickly just explain what this basically is. So we have this append tooltip here. And what you can see is we can ask stack dot has nbt and this is a boolean method which basically returns true if this stack that is in the actual inventory has nbt data now we need to think about okay what is an item and what is an item stack the difference is pretty much the same as with the block class and the block states class the idea of the blocks was block is sort of a singleton pattern more or less and the block state is the actual blocks inside of the world same thing goes for the items the item class is more or less a singleton pattern while while the item stack are the actual stacks inside of the inventory. So if I have a stack of 64 diamonds, that is a item stack of type diamond. If I were to split that in two different stacks, then now I have two different item stacks. So that's sort of the way that you can think about it. And this is why we basically, you know, can ask the stack if it has NBT data and asking the item whether or not it has, it has NBT data doesn't really make sense because then all of the items of that particular type would have it. And that, of course, is not quite right. You can also think of it as, well, you have two different pickaxes, right? And then each pickaxe has to have different data because of course, otherwise the durability on both of them would go down the same way and not only on your pickaxes, but it would go down on every pickaxe on the server that is the same type. That of course sort of ho hopefully illustrates the point, the difference between an item and an item stack. Now what we're gonna have here is a fairly straightforward thing. So we're gonna overwrite the has glint method. This is the method that you usually basically return true on when this item has an enchantment or this stack has an enchantment. We're just gonna say, hey, if this has NBT data, then it's gonna glint. Also what we're gonna do is if this item has NBT data, we can right click and sort of reset it as you can see. So we're gonna say, hey, just the stack that you have in the hand, just set the NBT data to a new compound NBT, meaning we're going to erase what has been there before. And then the append tooltip is just going to show the actual, basically the data here. So we're going to just get the NBT from the stack. And then we're going to get a particular string with this key in there. And then we will write that to the tooltip when we hover over it. That's sort of the basic idea of the data tablet. Let's actually create that in the mod items class so that we have that as well. I'm just going to copy over the Ruby horse armor here. And this is going to be the data underscore tablet. And this is going to be the data underscore tablet. And this is of course a data tablet item, which only needs the item settings here and nothing really else. Right. And now the, well, the crazy thing comes in where we actually have to do something in the dousing rod item. And what we're going to do is we're going to add, well, a couple of methods here and some of them, once again, I have said this uh, previously, could probably be taken to a util class later down the line. For the time being, we're still going to try to make this, you know, cleanly as possible, but we're not going to separate it out too much. I will actually copy over three different methods here. That's going to be the get first inventory index. I'm going to copy over the has player stack in inventory and has player data tablet. So I'm going to copy those over, of course, once again, available in the description below, GitHub repository or individual gists. And the idea is that the get first inventory index is simply going to get the first index of this particular item. If, if this player has this item in the actual inventory, it's just going to return the first index where this occurs. That's pretty much all that this is. The has player stack in inventory is pretty much the same thing, just that we actually just want a true or false here instead of having the actual index. And then the last thing here is has player data tablet. Also, that's a very particular thing basically to ask, but it pretty much just calls this method right here. And this just makes it a little bit nicer to read. And then what we can do is we can now finally add something in here. So so when you actually find a valuable block here, what we're going to ask is we're going to say, hey, if player has not 
the second item about the actual data tablet because that's basically what we want. We can pass in the player and now we can save some NBT data to the actual well tablet. What I'm going to do is once again, I'm going to copy over the method that I made for this and I'm going to explain it, of course. This is the add NBT to data tablet method. This is actually fairly straightforward. It's not too crazy. We're first of all going to get the stack of the actual data tablet. So this is the stack that it's going to find. And what we're going to do is we're going to basically get the stack via the inventory. And here we're going to say, hey, get the first inventory index of this item, right? So we need the index of this item. That's the idea here. And then we can get the stack via its inventory. Uh, because of course, we can't just pass in anything here. So Fabric actually doesn't come with any, you know, particular inventory methods. So Forge, for example, has some inventory methods built in that are very similar to this, but I just remade them, so to speak. And once again, those should definitely be in some sort of util class, you know, inventory util as a static methods, for example. But for the time being, we're going to be fine. And as you can see, then we create a new NBT compound variable right here, and we're going to put in a string. So the NBT data works in the following way. So if I just put in NBT data dot, and then you can see I can put in different, well, types of variables, right? I can put in strings. I can also put in basically any NBT element. We're not going to worry about that for the time being. But as you can see, I can put in byte arrays. I put in floats, int arrays, doubles, bytes. So I could probably almost store anything in here if I absolutely wanted to. So some basic data that a, well, item stack could use. And in our case, I just wanted to basically save this string here. So I'm just going to save the found, you know, something string at a particular position. And that's going to be then be displayed on the actual item once again via the append tooltip method. So this is basically the way that we're doing this in this way. And then here we're just sending the NBT data to this NBT data. So this is pretty much the way that you would go about setting NBT data on an item stack. Overall, fairly straightforward. However, what I will say is that sometimes I also kind of forget which uh, methods you should use because if I take a look at the NBT methods that are here, you can see there's also write NBT, there is has NBT, get or create NBT. So there's a few different methods here, uh, which sometimes can be a little weird. So you need the set NBT to actually set NBT data and then the get NBT gets you the NBT back. So that's sort of the thing that you need to keep in mind. And then now he up here, when we are actually here in has player data tablet, then we can say, well, add the NBT data to the tablet for this player. And then we need to pass in the position clicked dot add zero minus I zero, and then the block below. So this simply is, of course, there to basically get the string that we output here as well. That's sort of the general gist there. And that will actually already work. So this will already add the NBT data to the well first data tablet that it finds. And it is going to override if the data tablet already has NBT data, and it's going to override this because that's the set NBT method. Let's middle mouse button click on here. And as you can see, this dot NBT is then equal to this NBT here. Yeah, that's pretty much the, the basic idea of NBT data. Now, of course, we've added an item. So let's first of all, add the translation as well. That's of course not to be forgotten, right? It's just right here, the data tablet data tablet that's not too crazy and then we can actually just take any old item model right here and say data underscore tablet and this is going to point to the data tablet texture here in this case which I'm also going to quickly copy over this is, of course, once again, nothing too crazy and all available for you as well. Well, tablet is, of course, not correct. This should be a tablet. There you go. And now everything should work fine. It's just a little bit of a typo. So now let's see if it works. All right, so we find ourselves back in Minecraft. And as you can see, the data template has been added. Currently, we can actually get it as a 64 stack. This is, of course, something that we might want to change as well. But that's, you know, just something for food for thought, basically. And now let's see. So if I right click with the actual, you know, dowsing rod, I should get the first one should get NBT data and a glint. So as you can see, there it is. And if I hover over this, you can see found coal ore at 5939 minus 100. And I can basically just go somewhere else. And there you go. Now I found copper ore and this has been overridden. Now it's always going to take in the first data tablet. So you could, of course, rewrite the code in such a way that, well, once a data tablet already has data on it, then maybe we would want to check the next data tablet. But that is, of course, that's something that you can, of course, you know, try to do yourself as well. They are, once again, like I've mentioned a lot of times previously, some Java knowledge, of course, is very much, well, key to this to basically figure out how it works. It is actually not too complicated, but yeah, that would be something. And let's see. So if I were to rearrange this and I right click, then you can see that this has now the new data and this still has the old data. So they are separate. 
and if I actually find something where I can't find an or, so that right here, didn't find any valuables, you can see that this doesn't actually write anything to the data tablets, because of course the actual add nbt data method is only called when we actually find something. And what I can also do is I can also take this in my hand and right click it. And then because you can see the glint is gone and the actual nbt data has been reset. So this is pretty much, yeah, this is pretty much a fairly good demonstration of how nbt data might work. But that would already be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would of course appreciate a like. Don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. So yeah.